Hello, and thank you for joining us on this episode of Constructive Conversations, a podcast where we aim to bridge the gap in communications between contractors and customers. Joining me today is Victoria Givlin. She's a master networker and marketer. She runs a print and digital marketing publication for companies who want to advertise in affluent communities. Victoria has a lot of expertise in photography, videography, acting, modeling, of course, print and digital marketing. She also hosts a monthly business networking group. And if you get connected, if you need to get connected with a business in Calgary, she's the person you need to talk to. We're going to dive deep into the topic of communication and tease out some tips on how consumers and contractors can improve their communications to get better outcomes. So Victoria, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This is an honor. It's great. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us more about what you do, what your company does. Yeah, so when people ask, I say that for the most part, I am a storyteller and a community builder. So I get to help support people with what they love to do, grow what they love to do. And it supports the community. It supports me. It supports my family. There's win-wins all day long. So like you said, the print and digital marketing options. Marketing encompasses a lot as I'm as the trades do, right? There's different specialties and niches that you fall into and that you choose the path that you go in. But yeah, we do print marketing to affluent clientele, like you said, in a privatized setting. So we have a high readership rate at 89.4% and we're really building great communities and figuring out how to spread positive good news in a local fashion, both in multi-channel mediums. That's great. What led you up to that point? How did you land in in this company that you're in now? So my, I'm a third generation entrepreneur. My grandmother and my mother both took le leaps at different times of their lives to start something new. And it really encouraged me to do that as well. We had a promotional marketing and print business in Ontario, and we started as an engraving shop. And then as entrepreneurship does, it goes, okay, well, can you do this for me? I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, I can do it. So Jen is my mom and she started doing the engraving company having left insurance and compliance and bought this company from our neighbor who was a nurse <laughs> and yeah, went from engraving to promotional products to print. And then I took on social media marketing and content creation for blogs and websites and things like that. And my dad did website design. So during the last few years, everything kind of shut down. So our clients were sports organizations, post-secondary institutions, big awards, gala nights, trade shows, and none of those things were happening. So, yep, mom said, I don't want to build this here anymore. I want to go do something different. So I mm -hmm. wished her the best at the time and let her go in 2021. And she found what we're doing now. So mm -hmm. that's kind of come full circle. But. Awesome. That's great. And what's like, what's your motivation? What's your passion that drives you to, to get out of bed in the morning and, and build these communities, like you said? Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, controversy to other media and news that can focus on if it bleeds, it leads. I get to focus on educating and empowering people in the community. So I really love getting to learn what people do and what is their why and how I can really communicate that effectively to these awesome readers. So it's having this great group of people that really care about the community because they've worked hard to be there. And then also on the business owner side, it's much more more alike than we think. So my why every day is to support and to help and to figure out how to grow and expand. Cause like I said, it's win-wins and it comes full circle. So I'm big on karma and belief that way. Mm -hmm. And that's great that it's the opposite of the typical news cycle. So that must give you more energy as as you work instead of being a drain. Oh, I got to go. Yeah. Find stuff that bleeds and leads. I'm glad I'm not mm -hmm. chasing that. Yeah. And my education was in criminology and psychology. So it was a lot of, you know, once trauma has happened or you're looking for negativity and you're trying to find and figure out why it's happening. I'm like, I would rather focus on creating more good and not avoiding a hard subject, but just being like, okay, well, 
let's figure out the best solution then. You're the expert. This is what I'm looking to do in my head, but how do I make this happen from start to finish? Mm -hmm. And that's a good sort of segue to what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, can you tell me about the companies that you typically work with? Yeah, so for us, the profession is important, but to me, it's not as important as the type of person that works for that profession. So mm -hmm. we're looking for business owners or strong business executives that are positive, family friendly, love giving back to the community, care about where they work, care about what they do and like educating. So it kind of splits into three. We have like wellness professionals, so that can be chiropractors, massage, acupuncture, anything of that nature, or it goes to trades, contractors, your, your body's feeling good, but my home isn't great. So my environment needs to be better. So any roofers, landscapers, as you know, carpenter, just amazing that he's in there. I love working with what we're doing there. But and then the other one kind of goes to holistic wellness, but on a different front more so from business or personal on the business side, insurance, mortgage broker, real estate, those sorts of investment and finance into yourself and your business. So mm -hmm. those tend to be the people that I serve. And a lot of them tend to be educators to others in their fields as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I'm definitely interested in the in the contractor part of the companies that you deal with. Yeah. Right. So when you say you look for companies that care about the community, they want to like impact the community. They're good at what they do. Uh, how do you screen for that? Like, what what do you look for uh, in a company that you want to be in one of your publications? Yeah. So if they want to be one of the outstanding businesses that are making an impact in the community. So meeting with the business owner, seeing what their goals are and if they align with us, if they want to be the next big name in that industry in the city, that's a great person for me to talk to. If they have a good plan about where they want to go and they've been up in business for a while and they've got good experience, they could have started a new business or franchise one if they want, but just someone that cares more just for themselves and they have like a community around them that, you know, they have those tools set in place. They have the invoicing, they have the back end, they have their website and social media up and running, but they just need a hand because it's a lot of work. So mm -hmm. yeah, the types of contractors that are true and honest and genuine and can follow up and communicate effectively with me and let me know what their goals are so I can help mm -hmm. are, you know, you get out what you put in so I have lots of avenues to kind of help are you open to receiving that and what can I do mm -hmm. great so yeah you touched on like honest open communication prompt responses which unfortunately in the contracting industry it's not always the case right there's um in in Alberta there's 6,000 registered contractors sorry there's 6,000 600 of them are are properly bonded and licensed so you have a lot of these fly by nighters, um, the contractor who wants to say, say they want to be on that level of, of high communication, of you know, providing a great service for the customers, what can they do to improve their marketing messaging? That's a great question. Yeah. So I would figure out which channels you want to show up for and be consistent on that. You don't have to be on all of them all at once, but if you've chosen Facebook and Instagram, then making that commitment to yourself and making that commitment to your community. So giving back and deciding it's really just sort of like we mentioned earlier before the filming was hyper focusing on what we do have available and reaching out to ask frequently asked questions, post what it is that you're doing today. I'm I've started from this base foundation and then six hours later, this is what I've created and people love that they're super visual. So being able to kind of connect that way on social media, there's, you can just ask, what would you like to see? Is there something that you're curious about in my industry? How can I help you? What are some misconceptions you've heard about my business or my, my industry? So yeah, I would try to set some time once a day, at least a little bit, even if it's just 15 to 20 minutes a day sharing other businesses and commenting on their stuff. It is a social media. So, and then on the other side, I feel like we get on this 
thing that we need to be perfect and we need to have the highest grade tech and we need to have all these things. And that's not true. Social media and video content is important to have some high quality stuff, but just being consistent and being vulnerable and being willing to show up is the biggest thing. So yeah, if you have any questions about what sort of content to make, I would dive into your own hero's journey. What, mm -hmm. where did you start prior to the business? Why did you follow this? Who guided you and where are you going and where are you being motivated to do now? Um, and for your own clients, what sort of problems do you solve on their end? How do you help improve their life and kind of make content that way or simple stuff too and following the calendar? You know, Valentine's Day is around the corner. That's easy to talk about for me anyway. I see that connection. And okay, well, Valentine's all about love. We love what we do. We love our work. So how can we talk about that and things of that nature, I guess? Yeah. Awesome. That makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so so the tips are it's better to post something than to to wait and try to make it perfect. So yep. just just post what you have. I like I like the hero's journey. So talk about like a story of where you were, where you came from, which people like to see stories on there mm -hmm. and, and then to do it consistently, like put it in a calendar. Yeah, make it meaningful, make it consistent, doesn't have to be perfect and see what other brands, even if they're not in your industry, find your, I've heard from a business coach, find your big six, find six mm -hmm. companies that you are small or large that are making a big impact that you're like, you know, I stand with these values. These guys are really awesome. I love what they're doing. And then spin it in your own way at the capacity that you can and make it fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. And then since, since like you, you market um, to these communities, to the community here in Calgary, um, what can the homeowner or the consumer look for? If they're looking for a company, they want a company that has values that, that's organized, that answers calls, what can they look for um, to find a company that lines up with their values? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a variety of channels you can kind of dive and do some research. So our publications, as you know, offer a way to educate the readers and build credibility. So you want to see the visibility of the business. You want to see where they're showing up on what channels. You want to see the credibility, where are the reviews, how are they showing up. If you are someone that wherever you're going, ask them for their favorite profession of that nature, who's your go-to massage therapist or go-to flooring person. Have you, have you redone contracting or renovations in your house recently? Who did you work with? How did you feel? But if you're more independent focused, you can take a look at you know, search engine, Google platforms, Facebook, Instagram, seeing their portfolio is huge for me. I want to see your expertise. I want to see what you really like to do. And if your brand and your vision aligns with what I might want done in my house or what the mm -hmm. consumer might want as well. So yeah, seeing a look at the reviews and often if check out their website, you can even give them a call and just ask hey you know just wanted to check in and have a few questions because that means that the social media and the marketing and the opportunities are working so mm -hmm. yeah so it goes back to what you're saying earlier so for a company to be found they need to have their website up to date be on multiple social media channels have their reviews out there yeah. so that so that they can be found by their customers yeah who are you targeting how are you targeting are you consistent what are you saying so i Currently, the biggest way to grow your brand is with video production and being on mm -hmm. social media and pushing that out there through a variety of channels and then print and social media at the same time in a very strategic way. Mm -hmm. um, you can do mail outs, you can do door hangers, you can do flyers, and it's not that that doesn't work. I was chatting with a contractor the other day, actually, that was saying his door hanger thing is he hands out mail outs one block up and one block down just saying hey i'm here until friday you can see what i'm doing if you want me to take a look at your basement mm -hmm. let me know so i thought that was really interesting but our publications and what we offer in that capacity finding a community that you want to support and then talking to them on the mm -hmm. affluent side because they don't 
they don't really stress about paying the contractor or having the issue for that. They can afford that. So mm. that's typically an ideal client market. So finding where that is and communicating with them. And there are studies that have come out in the last year about how the affluent people specifically really do prefer like a physical, tangible print in their hand. Mm -hmm. And then digital just makes it 400% more effective in remembering the brand. So. Right. So that's a little reminder. Yeah. It's like another touch point. Oh, yeah. This brand that I saw. Yeah. So is that something you help companies with? Is there their strategy and like developing that whole, that comprehensive plan? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to making video or anything like that, or articles that we're putting together, I am here to hold your hand along the way. We're the experts of what we do, so you can be the experts of what you do. Mm -hmm. I am very similar to this. I love asking what gets you excited, what do you want to talk about, what do you want to educate our readers about. You're the expert and you'll have so many terms, but how do we make that comprehensive and understanding to the audience members and make them want to ask more to learn more about you. Mm -hmm. So when you you said uh, like you're the expert at what you do, <laughs> so I'm the expert at what, what I do. Yeah. Do you find there's resistance from like maybe specific, specifically from contractors who think, oh, no, I can do it all. And this is also an attitude that entrepreneurs have. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'll just handle it. I'll do it myself. Um, do you like do you notice that resistance when you're having those conversations with business owners to, to sort of hand over the reins? Yeah, so I mean, I used to do social media marketing content and creation and posting on your behalf, and that's not exactly mm -hmm. what I'm doing now. It's a bit of a different laneway, but what I always tell people is I'm like, I'm not looking to take over your marketing. I'm essentially like a fractional marketer in your corner. I am here to talk to you about ideas and give you feedback and, you know, really bounce ideas off with you, but I don't want to control nor should I because when these people do reach out we make these articles and we make these engaging social media content they're going to talk to you so I, I need the business owner to be responsive and communicate effectively and prioritize dialogue with me and know that the best businesses at a certain point know how to delegate and know how to not focus on what they don't want to do anymore and can pass that to someone who I am not, I do not cut or color my hair that is not something that I'm willing to do so because I know that I probably could do it mm -hmm. but it's gonna be better if I just let the professional do it yeah. so letting the pros do what they love to do and then when you can I mean sometimes you're like look I'm a brand new I got nothing I I can't okay well you can make a video on your phone, you can mm -hmm. post it, you can go on social media and boost it for like however much your budget is and just kind of get started and then start getting some data and seeing what people are liking and enjoying. But I don't get too much resistance on whether or not they want my help. It's a, typically a matter of whether or not they're ready to get started. Because once you get started, you really can't slow down or stop because that is like a thing once you... If I look at your social media and you haven't posted for six months, a year, two years, people don't think that you're open anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's more the resistance of I'm ready to go, but I'm not sure. Like, it's OK. Yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like they're turning on the faucet. Like when you say that, like, yeah, you're going to now you're going to be busy when once you you turn on this faucet. Yeah. It's going to start like a mm -hmm. snowball effect, really, is it's mm -hmm. going to, okay, you know, you're going to start and it'll be small. And you also want to have manageable growth. Yeah. So what does success look like for you, both as the contractor and then from the contractor to their own clients? Okay, you know, is it, how fast is it done? How often are we communicating? What is a good communication for you? Do you prefer over the phone? Do you like email? What might be better? Just having both of the channels open available is probably best. But mm -hmm. yeah, knowing that as we help and we open that faucet, it shouldn't just come out like a waterfall like crazy, but it'll it'll build. But as that's happening, does your business have the system set up to build that capacity? Are you mm -hmm. available and ready to do the hiring and the recruiting? Do you have a team available? Do you want the team to have more hours or do you need to hire one once you get that going? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And you mentioned 
data so you can start to collect data mm -hmm. um what and I, i'm super into data so yeah. what what can people track like what are sort of metrics that you should be looking at when you're running a marketing campaign in your business yeah so marketing and branding is different than sales and lead generation so i'm always telling people that and trying to help them so in this context if marketing is the blueprint of the foundation and getting that sort of set up then that is the underlying marketing and branding side the sales and lead generation is the contractors coming in and building the house so we need the branding and the marketing to be set up to see how that is working can be hard to track but it's similar to going to the gym you're not going to get an immediate result but showing up giving it your best at that moment for what you got and being consistent and being okay with failure, finding where your failure is, and then learning from it and growing from there. So to track if branding is working, is your company growing? Are you getting more phone calls? Are you getting more emails? Are you busier? Are you hearing from people more frequently? How do, you know, are other people showing up and saying, hey, I saw your video, or hey, I had questions about this article that you wrote or i saw you in this publication and i saw you at this trade show i saw you here i saw you there so that's the visibility because with visibility we build credibility mm -hmm. so yes in terms of knowing that your branding's working you're getting busier but you're also established and that people understand who you are what you do how you can offer your services and you can track impressions you can track mm -hmm how so impressions are how many people have stopped scrolling and starting to build that visual and mental recognition of your company and what that is so getting a print somewhere to an affluent community getting to know what the readership rate to build that data up getting to see on google what is trending in my industry right now what sort of interior design trends are happening that i could again make on my own and kind of show that I wouldn't say to trace or track or try to follow trends exactly mm -hmm. like to the T that doesn't guarantee success, but innovating it in your own way and being like, okay, well, if I made a podcast campaign or I made a series of videos of me in the last month working a variety of projects, mm -hmm. which projects on social media did I get more responses from? Did I get more likes, engagement, clicks, comments, emails, phone calls from? And following the success. So, okay, we really had this great conversation about renovating a sink. Okay, so how can we do, should we do like a bathroom tour and then do the tub and kind of work that way around for the next month and kind of grow mm -hmm. from there? Yeah, so you can you can look back and see what worked and then do more of what's working. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. awesome. That's a good tip. A bit of it at first, of course, for anyone is trial and error. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, but you can follow other brands and see what has led to success for them and mm -hmm. try to give it a go in your own way. Right, so you just find like a related brand in your industry. It doesn't even have to be in your city, but someone who does what you do and then sort of see what's working for them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'm sure they'll be trying new things and being daring and innovative can get you some good results for sure. But um, just making sure that it's professional and on brand. But mm -hmm. yeah, seeing what the leaders in your area are already doing, you know, uh, rising tide lifts all ships. Whoever's going in that direction, I want to mm -hmm. go in that wavelength with them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. So for the customer perspective, mm -hmm. So to help the customer find the right co companies, how can they differentiate between, say somebody um, has just spent a bunch of money on, on some Facebook ad campaigns, and so they're getting these ads pop up, um, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that, you know, it's an established brand, you know, if they just spent the money. How do they sort of differentiate between someone who's, like an established brand that that has a reputation behind them and just somebody who's who's pulling some fast marketing moves um, to try to get you in the door. Yeah, so testimonials are a great way to look at that mm -hmm. and then seeing the other people that are supporting them and what they're doing in the industry. If you, it's some research really mm -hmm. is, okay, you found an ad that was attractive, 
what about it made me feel this way? What am I feeling? And then doing a bit of a deeper dive. So clicking on it, going to the website, how easy is it to work through? How do I feel when I'm looking at it? Those sorts of things. And then seeing a quick Google search or a quick Facebook search, like, are they involved in the community? Are they backed by reputable people? Do they have, if they're in publishing, do they have a reputable business behind them? Do they have video content? Where are they showing up? How often are they showing up? And to know if they're credible or not, reviews are often pretty good for that. And seeing there's Facebook, Google reviews, um, often there's testimonials on business websites and things like that, seeing that they're relevant. If someone, like if your neighbor or something got something done, you can ask them for their opinion and see how that goes to know that they're reputable because that often becomes a thing mm -hmm. is it's reputable and word of mouth. So trusting on that side. And um, if you see them showing up on more mediums than one, then they're more professional. If they're mm -hmm. in print publications, then they've been reputed and they're credible. Mm -hmm. So does that answer the question? Does that make more sense? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that can be helpful for people instead of just instead of just going, oh, yeah, I saw one ad for this person. Let's let's call them and, and start booking the work. It's like, no, take a little more time, slow down, mm -hmm. do the research um, and make sure that it is a reputable, co reputable company. Yeah, I mean, it's a big investment in your house to be doing these mm -hmm. contracts like work and to get that done. So taking that extra minute to figure it out and making sure that you align with the business and with the business owner too, because mm -hmm. you want to fall in love with your space. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, going from, from like the digital and the online marketing, to in person. So you do a lot of like in person, you host your networking, business networking events. And then you mentioned like companies can can show up at trade shows. Um, yeah, talk more about like your your events and, and what happens there. Absolutely. Thanks. So you grow your business in two ways. This is the community building part that I focus on. You grow your business in person and with content. So in person, hitting up some networking, going and seeing other events. So the Chamber of Commerce, there's BX, there's a variety of networking groups. If you're not sure which one you want to do, if you're feeling bold like I was, you can make your own. Mm -hmm. And it's just, again, feeling the energy of the room and the area and letting the understanding in your own brain, because I feel like some people get so nervous about networking. And I'm like, at the end of the day, you're all there for a common goal. And that's to grow your brand, grow your relationships in the community, and to support one another. So finding those groups that are consistent, and those people that show up, I have made it a point to do networking once a month that I posted. There's no membership here. It's just if you can come by, come by. Mm -hmm. And we rotate the venue that it's at and we showcase that business owner to try to give back in another way. So we'll get about 30 business owners into a different location to take a look around mm -hmm. and sit in the energy and see that world and kind of understand a little bit more about them and what their life is like. So get a better understanding and feel for how we can maybe help them. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's that's what I do. I want to be a referral source for people. I understand that what I offer, some people don't have the budget for, and that's okay. I'm sure you get that quite frequently. Mm -hmm. But just knowing like, okay, well, I know this is a goal that you have in mind and that you'd like to do it when the time is right. But I'm, a he I'm here to answer any questions or help you with whatever along the way as I can until you're ready anyway. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, in terms of contractors, because a lot of them might say, oh, yeah, well, I'm already busy. You know, I'm busy on jobs. I, I don't have time to go to go network and meet other business owners. So um, what's what's the draw for them? Like what what benefit are they going to see? So there are industries right now like HVAC and plumbing that are going crazy busy. And that's mm -hmm. fantastic. And this was the same sort of discussion last summer with the painters. Sure. And this is awesome. And I'm so happy that there's so much abundance for them. But at a certain point, eventually, it's going to change. 
So being prepared and having those systems set up in place already that, you know, if say for instance, like the realty industry, there's 7,000 realtors in Calgary mm -hmm. now, they went from 2,500 prior to pandemic to 7,000. So how do you stand out? How do you show up and be consistent? Even if you're really busy, that's great. But unfortunately, because the average consumer is bombarded with so many ads every single day, we get more than 10,000. 10,000 ads 10, per day. ads a day. So if you're not showing up consistently, even if you are a business owner that's busy, the question would be, do you want to grow? So not mm. if it's not a good fit for me to be on the marketing if they don't want to grow. If they're like, man, I can't keep top from down. I don't want to do that that's okay that's an all right answer but even if you're busy now have you ever not been busy before have you struggled to find clients in the past you can only go to so many things and do so many things at once so really being hyper focused like okay well even if i just go to one networking a week and the biggest thing that blows my mind about networking i find is people come out and they don't take the initiative okay, I got your business card. That's great. We had a great conversation. And now I go home and there's a stack of business cards for the next two weeks that are just collecting dust on my desk. Well, that's the actual networking is after the meeting, after that happens. Yeah. So taking that initiative, following through and being like, okay, well, let's be super intentional. Let's go to this one networking thing this week or this month, whatever works for your schedule, depending on how busy you are. And let's make a relationship with two people that are just incredible that I thought were awesome energy. And I just want to learn more about them and see mm -hmm. if they're in your circle, meaning even better. So if they're a plumber and you're a carpenter, okay, this is a great conversation to have. This mm -hmm. is good support systems that we can have that we could use each other and have this sort of relationship to go off of. So for me, it's big on perspective and attitude. If you're busy, totally understand, super happy about that. But you know, just because you're in great shape doesn't mean you stop going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. It, you got to keep going. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So that's really the proactive approach because then you're building some relationships and, and the networks where that'll that'll bring the work in. You can leverage those if when you do slow down. And then you said um, to be hyper-focused um, and intentional about about actually following up about saying okay i'm not just going to go collect 20 business cards i'm going to have a conversation with two people and follow up with them later so that we actually build that relationship and that connection yeah. and then and then that ends up being fruitful later on i understand not everybody's an extrovert so that can mm -hmm. be overwhelming but at the end of the day you can control two things your attitude and your actions so you don't have to go extreme you just need to be consistent. So even if it's one new person, whatever that looks like for you, you set your own goals. One new person a day, one new person a week, one networking thing, like just it will slowly and steadily grow your company and yeah, your actions. So even when things are good or things are bad, like your optimism book, just keep on keeping on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like just, yeah. You can control what you can do and it'll cause a ripple effect in what's happening down the line. So if you're the one who's reaching out and making these relationships, then you know that it will grow that tide. Yeah, yeah, they're still, you're still moving forward. You're still progressing, even if you can't see, you can't see where you're headed. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're getting somewhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, awesome. Um, I want to hear uh, what trends do you see in the marketing world? Like what, what's, uh, what's coming up? What are the top, the top players doing? Top players. Well. The marketing world is getting so broad and so expansive mm -hmm. and so evolved as we do too as a business. So in terms of what I'm seeing for trends, people are making more podcasts, people are making mm -hmm. more TV shows, people are willing to be this presence online mm -hmm. in so effective mediums involve photos, they involve content, but that's the thing is there are so many different kinds of learners out there and so many different type of people interpret things differently. So having the marketers or the people that are growing their brand in incredible ways have lots of channels that are consistent and they have teams that do it. So they will make their own 
email templates. They will make their own like weekly newsletters. They will make their own printouts that go to their desired communities consistently. They will show up on Facebook, Google, Instagram, all these other platforms that work for them, TikTok, YouTube. It can be a lot. Mm -hmm. So just getting started. But the big ones are the ones that are showing up. They're consistent. They are putting in the effort, the time, and they're delegating other people to take the things that they can't do. And then investing in their own brand. You have all this content, that's fantastic. But if you're not investing in the ads and in the branding, those are the things that specifically reach out to people that have mutual interests and gets your brand in front of their feed. So mm -hmm. organic content alone can be very difficult to expand unless you're always running contests or things like that, which can be very tiring as an entrepreneur. You can't always offer free stuff. So, yeah. so. Um, being able to show up and invest in your own brand and your own passion in your marketing and advertising is what the leaders are doing. Because again, if there's 7,000 realtors, how are you communicating and finding those specific exclusive channels so we offer as you you know but your audience might not that we are industry protected so with our publications we only have one mechanic that would be in the uh, publication educating the readers and we would only have one of each industry so kind of having that exclusive real estate in the consumer's mind and being consistent is very valuable so investing in that mm -hmm. but yeah, giving back to themselves and giving back to their branding and advertising channels. If you want to be consistent in social media marketing and in branding, you should be spending at least 10 to 15% on your marketing initiatives alone. Mm -hmm. If you want to compete and be the next big name in the city, like the gentleman of the whatever painting industry of the city, you're yeah. going to have to beat the plumber. Yeah. yeah. Beat the plumber. Uh -huh. You're going to have to invest like 20 to 30% aggressively into your marketing and just know mm -hmm. that that's what it takes. Yeah. So, okay. That's great. So the top companies, they're, they're omnipresent. They're on all the channels they, they even go, they find exclusive channels and mm -hmm. then they're consistently, consistently producing on there, which, which probably means delegating and having, having a team or multiple teams to yeah. keep, to keep that coming. Yeah. So, I mean, as a business owner, I feel like a lot of people can get stuck working in the business and not working on the business. So if you're a contractor, or carpenter, or whatnot, you might be stuck working in the tools and on the job and finding the time to have the capacity to network because that's working on growing the business and to make this content can be hard. But just showing up consistently and putting it into micro sized chunks for you to kind of grow and expand. And then once you have that budget, really our options with what we offer on the marketing scene, I've never seen better. Mm -hmm. So I'm huge on what we do and what we offer. But when people are like, Hey, you know, I'm going to do a radio ad and I'm going to make a television show. And I'm, that's fantastic. Those are great mediums too. I don't want you to stop that either. So just slowly and steady, you know, you go to a gym, you've never been there before. You do a tour of the thing and then you're like, okay, well, we're going to start with body weight first and stretching and kind of building up from there. And then you can move to the weights and the free weights and the racks and all the different ensembles and availabilities there. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So talking about like a smaller or even, or even like an individual who's their, who's their own business um, and they're trying to, to take these little steps to to grow their brand and their and their presence, um, how can they start to do that? And I want to take you as an example because you're you're very omnipresent. You're on all the all the channels everywhere. You're posting every day. You're on there. So like, where do you get the energy to keep that up and and to do and the consistency? Like, where does that come from? And how can somebody who's who's like a small business owner on their own um, emulate that? That's a great question. I think to emulate it, it's very similar to building a habit at this point. Mm -hmm. It's consistency. At first, it's going to seem like a mountain of effort. And, you know, give yourself tons of little rewards through the day, whatever that looks like for you. So if you've been meaning to film a podcast or if you're a solopreneur and you're trying to make something, okay, let's habit stack it. So 
when you have your cup of coffee, you can even take a picture of the coffee and you can write a little blurb about what you're doing that day or where you're going or who you're helping and why that matters to you. And just right then and there, you have some content and you're getting some stuff going and it's out there. So, I mean, just being willing to do the work and show up. If you have a habit tracker, if you have a calendar and you're just kind of like crossing it off, I made setting time in your day where you're like, okay, for the next 15 minutes to half an hour, I'm going to focus on making a Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn post. And I'm mm -hmm. going to do that. And then the next half hour, I'm going to write or contemplate an email template. And then the next day, maybe half an hour, you're contemplating an article that you want to write, or you're looking at a trade show you might want to go to. So mm -hmm. just giving yourself that time to block out in your day, even if it's whatever you can, like 10 minutes to half an hour, build it as you have the time. And then as it grows, expand it. So your team grows and other people can focus more time on that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So making it a habit pattern, mm -hmm. like using using different templates or having a plan and calendarizing it uh, when you're going to do it. And then that that builds that consistency. So then it gets easier and easier. Yeah, and finding another accountability partner too. Mm -hmm. Like if that's your significant other, if that is your, maybe you're a painter and a flooring guy and you both want to get started and you want to help each other, then you can mm -hmm. ask, can I hold you accountable for making this Facebook post this day or whatnot? Mm -hmm. And just, you can kind of motivate each other. That works with the gym too. Like maybe you have a hard time going, but after your friend goes, you're like, yeah, I can't not go. And then mm -hmm. you go yeah. and get it done. Yeah. So yeah, leaning on your community, leaning on your support system, and just figuring out what excites you. Make it fun. Taxes are not always fun. Getting your teeth done are not always fun, but they're necessary. And so, okay, how can we make marketing something that isn't so taboo that we're enjoying? So, mm -hmm. I like what you said, like make it part of your day. So you're drinking your coffee and, and take a picture of that, or you, or you sit down at the office. This is what I'm going to do today or this is what I did today. So it doesn't have to be like an elaborately planned out thing that you go out of your way to produce. It's just, it just becomes a part of your day. Yeah. You can create these really cool campaigns. You can really go all out and I encourage that. That's no problem. But if that sounds like a very daunting task and you don't know where to begin, show us the day in the life of what you do right now. Mm -hmm. We all start somewhere, you know, Huge yep. multi-billion dollar people in the world started in somebody's garage. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah. just start, really. Yeah. And that's and that's probably more interesting to other people than somebody would think that, oh yeah, I just I come into to the shop and and we run the machines all day. Uh, you know, it's boring. But for somebody else, they say, Oh my god, you have one of those? Yeah. I've never seen that before. So then people actually do want to see see what's going on. Absolutely. So that's a like, good tip. Be proud of what you're doing and how passionate you are and why you do what you do. Because I feel like we do that a lot. We're like, well, why would anyone, I get this frequently, I think it's a generation thing. Our generation kind of grew up right with the tech in hand. So we're mm -hmm. like, okay, the older generations, they just are, they didn't have that availability. They didn't have the internet. They're like, I'd rather not. And I'm like, just... They're like, why would I, and people in general, they're like, but what value do I have to provide in blasting this out on the internet that people would care about? I'm like, it's opening them up to your universe and opening them up to your world and showing them your perspective and what gets you excited and what you're really lit up about. And people will feel that. So if you're a business owner and you're I used to work in the floral industry, so making like a wedding arrangement, getting to put that together for a client and help them, like that was the biggest day of their life up till then. That was super mm -hmm. exciting for me. So showing them or asking like, okay, well, I'm working on this project. What colors would you like it in? And asking your audience that way can kind of build up things from there as well. Okay, awesome. Um, now I want to talk about the future. So where do you see... Like in 10 years, um, what do you think marketing is going to look like? What do you think people will be, will be the new innovations that have come out? Oh, that's a good question. So in 10 years, what I've noticed is I feel like in the last, in the last 10, people have thought that physical, tangible print is dead. 
<laughs> and while I would agree with you for a lot of things, hyper focused niches will be what I see in the future, I think. Mm -hmm and making these different character profiles and figuring out really what they like, what they don't like on a personal level and understanding, implementing tech and both tangible and intangible. So digital and print, people still love, you know, holding that item of your product in their hand. They like mm -hmm. tangibly, whether that's, you know, you're a photographer and they're going to want a canvas print. It's got more of a soul to it than just looking at it online. But if they never saw it online and can't order it. So for me, I think it's going to be innovating technology. So AI is coming up and I think people are nervous about that. And I, you know, we've all seen Terminator and stuff like that. So that makes sense. I understand but really focusing on where our perception is going and how we can adapt as a business. So implementing that email campaign, implementing video, implementing video in a podcast. Is it a TV show? Is it an email newsletter that goes out or a YouTube channel? Um, it's going to be more consistent and the AI you can use to incorporate maybe some topics or maybe some ideas to guess from there. I mean, it, it can be difficult, but I think just implementing deeper and deeper into the roots of tech and tangible, because I mean, there's a reason why fads come and go and mm -hmm. why old classic things are classic they're timeless so yeah. certain things won't go away and won't stop so just making sure those are great and you've got a firm hold on that while implementing whatever new interwebs the tech people are creating mm -hmm. and, and innovating with that is uh where yeah. i see us going. so it's just it's just like wainscoting it's, it's 200 years old and people still want it in their house because they say oh yeah that's a classic look it but is. then there's there's also the other side of which is the modern you know the modernist and and the new technology that's coming out that'll that'll continue to evolve but the classic the stuff classic stuff that works will still be there yeah absolutely so you'll have different character profiles and different clients that you serve and knowing too for you like maybe you only want to do new age and that's all you want to focus on i mean i'm not one to tell you you can't just go at it but mm -hmm. yeah i i personally think like the old hollywood glam the old these um, beautiful architecture pieces that you have up here from the past and Leonardo da Vinci, like none of those things are any less valuable. They're still super important and people love that. Like there seems to be a different energy to the timelessness of the past and how to renew that into your own version of the future. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. And then still on the topic of the future, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do I see myself in 10 years? I want to keep doing what I'm doing now. I absolutely awesome. adore what I'm doing. I get to help people with their branding and their visibility in a variety of different channels and facets. So, I mean, for me, it's having more intentional sessions with, okay, maybe let's have them networking is great let's have more one-on-one -on -one coffees and see how we can directly introduce people to be referral partners right now so kind of building on that database and going from there is where i'd like to move forward um and yeah just being hyper intentional with my day and my focus and having um regular updates and feedback loops with the people in my community and knowing what lights them up and how i can support them and show up for them too mm -hmm. so the TV show that we're hosting will be launched and the teasers and intros and outros. So that will be happening, but really expanding what we're doing in the community and just diving deeper. You and I both came to Calgary last year. So yeah. I think we started planting some awesome seeds, but you know, trees don't happen in a year. Mountains aren't made mm -hmm. that fast. So just diving deeper and educating and connecting with more people in an authentic way is what I'm going to uh, keep doing. Awesome. So you keep watering the seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, and I like that you're you're very intentional, like hyper-focused. You said that like uh, several times, <laughs> but uh, that's awesome that you have that focus and then you can you, you can see that's what it takes if you want to have uh, big results. Then you have 
have to have your focus. You can't be scattered, scattered everywhere. Yeah, I find my family's been diagnosed with ADHD and my mom's very, she's like, oh yeah, you've got it, but you've managed to wrangle it in as you do. And we all have to kind of like wrangle our own demons, but reading and educating myself is important. So I've been listening to like the seven habits of highly effective people. And Mm -hmm. there was another one about high performance achievers and different habits that they have in their day across multiple mediums, like composers, fascinating artists, high performance athletes, and they all seem to have the same sort of thing. And that you need to set boundaries clearly for your time invest everything that you got and go all in as to the best of your ability your best is always enough so always go to the best of your ability to what you can they recommend having six days five to six days of doing what you love to do and pushing your brand and pushing your medium Mm -hmm. and then take one day where you are completely Mm hands-off fill your cup in whatever that looks like for you your family hiking your dog completely separate from work so you can Mm -hmm. give that back to you and then setting throughout like on those days that you are working the brain is fantastic with doing one thing at a time so okay like if planning it out for you works then that's awesome if not and you're more of like these are the tasks I need to get done in my day mentally being like okay well let's prioritize what needs to get done let's spend between The research in that book was saying that between 25 minutes and an hour and 15 is how long your brain can specifically focus on one thing, depending on how physically or mentally invigorating it is. Mm -hmm. So just giving it your all for that one task, if it's all answering all your emails, not email, someone messaged you on Facebook, someone texted you and called you, like just making sure that you block off that time that you're like, nope, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm hyper focused on this and then taking another after that half hour chunk hour and 15 is done do that same sort of thing completely take a break go for a walk Mm -hmm. go have some food fill your cup call a friend whatever that looks like for you and then go right back at it again awesome that's great that's some some bonus some bonus high productivity tips so I'm sure I'm sure that's valuable to everyone awesome that's what I hope to help with and uh, try to, you know, if I can help someone else and make a difference for one person, then it was worth it. That's a great attitude to have. <laughs> um, okay, so before we finish off, what's one communication tip that you would give to contractors in general? How can they improve, like something they can they can uh, do just to, to level up their communication when they're talking to customers, the people they deal with? Absolutely. So I wrote this little blurb here. Um, So we want to focus on effective communication. So that typically involves three things. We can focus on these three things and we're doing very well for ourselves in relationships in general, but contractor and client especially. So we need to have clear expression. We need to be honest and forefront about what it is that we're asking and wanting to do. We need to have active listening because even when I was doing social media marketing, I'm like the biggest thing with relationships is that you are social, you are engaging, you are paying attention and you are present and having a mutual understanding. Okay, so I understood from what you're telling me that this is what's going to happen and what your expectation is. That extra wrap up is under, oh no, actually we have so many different realities or perceptions or even, I mean, on the renovation side, maybe you, or even any project, you're like, I think I want it to go in this direction, but based off our conversation, I think we should head that way Mm -hmm. because of your guidance. Okay. So I understand that you wanted to go in this direction. Mm -hmm. So prioritizing dialogue, sharing vision and expectations, both between the contractor and the consumer, the client being like, okay, we're on the right path together. Um, But should that not happen? You want to show them that you're having open communication to build trust and that you are there for them and align your goals to minimize your misunderstanding and enhance your success. So letting them know that you are available to ask, you're approachable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Any questions, comments, concerns, I'm here in your corner. I am not available 24 seven, but you can reach me 24 seven and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If it's an emergency, typically with people, I'm like, give me a call. 
if you need something right this second, call me and I will drop what I'm doing and do that for you. But otherwise, I'm kind of neck deep in whatever yeah, that you're task focused. is. You're yeah. focused on something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, having that active participation, listening, sharing and aligning with goals in every step of the way. So I find some people and contractors too. I had a gent reach out to me about setting a meeting and left me a voicemail. That's fantastic. My voicemail will transcribe it as I'm not available, but even following up on a text message, hey, you know, some people prefer email, some people prefer a text message, but just being open and available and responsive within a, a decent time. Mm -hmm. Like if you're 24 hours, try to get within 24 hours. If you're really busy, 48 makes sense, yep. 36, 48. But to just kind of leave them open-ended, then it's not going to build a good relationship. So. Okay, those are some great tips, very useful. And what about from the consumer perspective? What What can they do to improve their communication when they're hiring someone or looking to hire someone? So letting them know what their goals are and what their budget is, is probably huge. And then also communicating what success looks like to them and what their sort of needs are. Do you want to have a conversation with the contractor at the end of the day to discuss what happened? Do you, what is best for the contractor if they want to communicate with you? If they need to order a product and it's delayed for some reason, or if it's discontinued, what's the best way to talk to you and what wouldn't, infringe too much on the client's life um mm -hmm. but that's professional and that's effective and yeah the clear communication dialogue setting the expectations for what you're wanting um for a lot of things and a lot of people just being understanding and going with the flow like understanding that if you are in your industry and you're a bricklayer or a painter you're doing the best with what you can if you found a good professional that really cares about what they're doing in their service and quality. So, okay, how can I make myself the best client? Be open to feedback, be open to discussion, be willing and ready to express my wants, needs, and goals, and <laughs> not be a micromanager. Mm -hmm. Like they hired you to you hired them to do the best of what they have to offer. And I know even with what I do in marketing, mm -hmm. because it is a trust the process thing. Yeah. And if you come in and halfway through the project, you express your concern for sure, but just have some faith in the contractor mm -hmm. that you've done some research with and that you've built a relationship with that it's going to turn out at the end result for what you're looking for. Yeah, definitely. So. That's great. That's all awesome advice. Thanks. No. Any other topics you want to cover off? Hmm. I guess it could be from your end, like as mm -hmm. a contractor, are there certain struggles that you found are very difficult that I can maybe shed some light on with marketing or um, what have your biggest hurdles been on that sort of journey? Yeah, I'll I'll go back to the time when I was running the business by myself, I didn't have my amazing marketing marketing team. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was I was busy, and it was all word of mouth word of mouth work. Um, so I wasn't worried about like social media and posting. So I didn't have any sort of habit uh, or consistent plan. And then um, and then that changed. Like you said, there's a slowdown. In, in my case, I moved here, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it was not having those systems set up because I was like, oh yeah, I'm fine. I have enough work to keep me busy. But then I was also at that same point, I wasn't growing, like you said, because I wasn't putting any effort into marketing. Um, so I stayed, stayed at the same level. And I was like, oh, this is just how it is to be a contractor. I'm just at this level and, and I guess that's it. But um, so I missed out on that. So yeah, it's just reinforcing what you said earlier about um, if you want to grow, you have to you have to put in that effort and and the budget into marketing um, so that the work is there so people do need it so people do know about you uh, at the point when you when you want them to yeah you invest in your tools you invest in your products and in your skills and your learning along the way and investing in your marketing and your branding is huge to help do that. Mm -hmm. If you are consistent and you're pleased with where you are and word of mouth is enough for you, that's great. 
if you want to create more of an impact, be the go-to in your industry and have a legacy, then you got to show up and you got to keep committing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And knowing, okay, maybe I can, there are people that are ready to take that jump to hire a marketing person, or you can get someone like me that we can do the services, but I'm in your corner, but we're not mm -hmm. paying an hourly rate. Um, the new offerings for things like our Google portal that we have. So Google itself, if you didn't know, checks 50 different websites in Canada mm -hmm. to see if you are reputable and valid. And that will land how you end up on the listings. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of the realtors, you want to be at the top of the search. The heavy hitters, the big swingers are spending a lot of money on the advertising and the branding and the search engine optimization to be at the very top. Mm -hmm. And that's clear. But the other ones underneath that are still building, we've created this portal now that's launching this month and it's very exciting, but it will verify all of those websites that Google searches automatically or organically. And it will say, okay, does your phone line up with all of them, your number, that's available mm -hmm. does your address line up does your business name line up because if they don't then it's inaccurate and you're going to start slipping and it just people will create confusion they're not really mm -hmm. going to understand so this portal that we've created to find tools that you can optimize your own sorts of things if you are doing it by yourself or you can hire a virtual administrator you can hire a social media marketer to create content for you they're brand ambassadors. There are people that do that. So when you're ready to invest in the campaign, then I'm open and I'm happy to talk. And prior to that, like everyone's got their own steps that they have to take to get up to it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can, there are grants out there too. There's the Canadian Digital Adoption Program. Mm -hmm. So that can get you a decent chunk to invest in your own marketing and mm -hmm. there are a few people I know that are agents that can kind of help you apply for that if you're confused but yeah you have to keep investing if you want to grow then growing your finances too you have to be consistent you want to build mm -hmm. in the gym you have to eat right and sleep right and drink enough water so yeah, that's all investment yeah yep having the willingness and the consistency to invest in your brand and how that looks for you is important if you want to grow. <laughs> Great. You have recently started this podcast mm -hmm. journey. How have you found it? It's It's been super fun um, and easier easier than I expected, actually, because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of tools now. I, I think, you know, maybe five years ago it would have been harder, mm -hmm. but there's platforms where... Um, you can distribute it to everywhere. There's AI tools that help me do the editing. Um, yeah, so then that that makes the background part easy. So then I just get to have the super fun conversations with with the guests. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure it's very motivating and inspiring to the other tradespeople that do want to make a difference that don't want to. I mean, I kind of joke sometimes too. I'm like, I'm not that idea of what people have of a used car salesman mm -hmm. you know we're available we're here for you we're professional mm -hmm. we want to help if it doesn't work and it doesn't align then that's okay you know yeah. so there are trades people such as yourself that do want to show up that do want to be professional and consistent and doing these sorts of things are going to help motivate others to do so as mm -hmm. well so i hope so yeah thank you for what you're doing it's awesome yeah yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on. And where can people find you and find out more about your company? Yeah, so you can send me an email if you like. Um, my name is Victoria. So if you do V and then Givlin, G-I-V-L-I-N at bestversionmedia.com. You can also give me a call or text 825-484-4414. Um, there's Facebook pages. There's um, websites you can look at whatever that might look like for you. So Instagram, I've got it at vgivlin, uh, at vgivlin for Instagram. Um, we've got a Facebook page, Givlin Gals Good News, mm -hmm. and we're launching The Local Connection, which will be a TV show similar to this, but asking them about their whys and really diving into their human experience and purpose for what they do. So yeah, I'm excited for that. And yeah, 
you can also reach out to Nick and uh, yep. ask him. Um, I'm here. I'm happy to connect. There's a ton of networking groups I go to. Eventbrite I'm hosting. You can see there's um, like a monthly thing that comes out too. So you can mm -hmm. subscribe to that. However you feel you best want to connect, I'm here. Yeah, and we'll link it uh, in the show notes. So that'll be that'll all be linked there. Yeah. All right, great. Well, that was a great conversation. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. It was me. a pleasure. And for letting me help you grow. It's amazing. I love mm -hmm. seeing what you're doing. I love the optimism. Oh, shout out for your book. Uh -huh. Definitely. Yes. If you guys yeah. have not read um, Nick's Optimism 2033, you are missing out. And it's a great refresher when, you know, we get self-doubt as an entrepreneur. We mm -hmm. get defeated sometimes because the world isn't always kind. And just learning to find that capacity to keep on keeping on, it's a great read. So, awesome. yeah, thank glad, you for that. Glad you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. the, ne the next one is in the works. There we go. Yeah. That's exciting. What's yeah. that one going to be called? Quit like a boss. Nice. So how to quit. Uh, like. Quit doing the stuff that you don't need to be doing anymore. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's yeah. part of the so gotta, letting go. That exactly. Yeah. About, you got to, right? if you want to grow, you have to let go of the stuff that's behind you. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. That'll be coming this year. Sometime. Awesome. Exciting. Okay. Well, I look uh, forward to reading it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.